Welcome. I hope you guys are still hanging on. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Um, it's never happened like this before, but we knew we'd come back with flying colors. Um, welcome to the Silver and Gold December Live Christmas Celebration. Can you believe Christmas is just nine days away? I don't know about you, but I think a little snow would definitely put me in the mood. Um, that snow on the ground is kind of hard to get around with, but it sure does make things feel like Christmas. Well, I can't see each of you. I do know your homes are filled with holiday decorations. Thank you for joining us today for this special holiday silver and gold. Our gatherings look a little bit different this year, but in our hearts and minds, we are all connected and blessed to have each other. My name is Jane Graves and I am your Silver and Gold Coordinator. The Silver and Gold Senior Club of Northwest Missouri is a Meyerhofer Community Outreach Program. We work to engage, educate, and entertain seniors in this area. We generally meet as a group each month and enjoy our presentations and entertainment in person as well as each other's company. Until we are able to meet as a group, mark your calendars for the third Wednesday of every month Follow us on the Silver and Gold Senior Club of Northwest Missouri Facebook page and we'll try to keep you engaged each and every month. Got a joke to start us off. What do reindeer say before they tell a joke? This one's going to slay you. There's laughter in the room. Now for the real joke. How do elves clean Santa's sleigh? Santatizer. I thought that one was most appropriate for this year. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. You've got the best seats in the house, so sit back and enjoy the Silver and Gold December Luncheon without lunch. A group that deserves a big thank you for all that they do throughout the year are Silver and Gold Partner Sponsors. These are the business that, businesses that have provided our drive through luncheons. They've not only paid for the luncheons, but they work hard to serve them to you and to deliver them to your homes when you can't get out. Frudenthal Home-Based Healthcare, The Hearing Connection, hy V, John Joe Insurance, Living Community of St. Joseph, Meyerhofer Funeral Home and Crematory, Performance Plus Rehabilitation Center, and Wiles Eye Center. They truly care about silver and gold members and should be the ones that you go to when you need something. We're so lucky to have them as partners of this club. What would you call an elf who has just won the lottery? Wealthy. <laughs> I did get a roll of the eyes from the man behind the camera on that one. <laughs> Well, speaking of lottery, St. Joseph, Missouri won the lottery when Laura Wyeth decided to leave her mark on this town. A realtor for Berkshire Hathaway Home Services Stein and Summers Real Estate, Laura partners with her sister, Lynn Stover. Their slogan is revitalizing downtown one building at a time. She grew up in St. Joseph and is here to share stories and pictures from the holidays and all in downtown St. Joseph. It's my pleasure to introduce my friend, Laura Wyeth. Laura, we're so glad you're here. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Jane, for inviting me to talk about a subject I'm very passionate about, all things downtown. I'm gonna focus on the holidays downtown, some of the past traditions, and what we are experiencing in 2020. So, are we gonna play that little clip? Okay, we're going to have a little intro clip. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas Everywhere you go Take a look at the five and ten It's glistening once again With candy canes and silver lanes that glow It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas so, holidays downtown. I'm going to talk about, this is something that's kind of grown the last five years with the momentum of downtown revitalization. Um, we coordinate the kickoff to the holiday season with Small Business Saturday, which falls on the Saturday after Thanksgiving. And with that, although we've changed some things from years past, we weren't able to do the parade where Santa came in or the dance troops or choirs, 
We still had the lighting ceremony in the park at Coleman, um, Coleman Hawkins Park, Felix Street Square. Someone each year is chosen to flip the switch to turn on the lights of all of the park. And there's a live Christmas tree, Parks and Rec, put up the lights on the gazebo. It's really quite beautiful and it stays up through the new year. This just gives you an overview shot. Patrick Evanson, photographer, took this. It shows um, looking west on 8th Street and Felix of the park and the new gateway that welcomes people to our downtown. And every night I go to turn the lights off on my window display, so my little dog likes to come down with me. This is Sasha, and we're standing in front of the gazebo at Coleman Hawkins Park. The second shot is on 7th Street, looking east at um, Coleman Hawkins Park. You can see the lights in the trees and the gazebo. Very, very pretty. The picture on the left is a new addition to downtown in the last couple of years. It's our concession stand. This year, the ornaments feature our musical instruments, and you'll note the music-themed mural behind. I want to give a shout out to a good friend that we lost this year, Larry Buck, who is so much a part of our music scene. And the concession stand is where sounds of summer, people can buy sodas or popcorn during um, the carriage rides. People will start there. I seem to have lost my picture. But that's kind of a, a meeting point for events. There we go. And then on the right is another shot. It's on Francis Street looking east throughout uh, the core area from about 8th to 6th Street and Edmund and Francis and Felix. You'll see snowflakes on the lampposts which give a great holiday feel. This year we did something new. We had to give up some of the things we normally did, but we had a fantastic fireworks display um, that kicked off after the lighting ceremony. My pictures probably don't do it justice. It's hard with a cell phone to capture that, but it was great fun, and I hope that's something we do each year because people really loved it. It was very festive. Carry drives, that's something we've been doing the last several years, and we're doing it again this year. They are every Saturday through Christmas from 5 to 8 p.m. They are free, although we encourage people to give a donation to the Salvation Army. They do so much work in our community, but you certainly are not obligated to do so. There are two carriages, and they pick up in front of the old German-American bank building, which is now Mosaic, on Felix, and then they go down Felix to 8th Street, up to Edmond, all the way to 6th Street, and back around. So it's about an eight minute um, fun carriage ride to see the lights and the window displays and the new shops and restaurants. And here's another shot, oh, come back. <laughs> here's another shot of the Cinderella carriage going under the arch onto 8th Street to make the turn. On the left, you can see room 108. It has a rooftop bar, and it's a private club on the second floor. Blue Willow Boutiques on the corner, and Felix Street Gourmet is next to that. You know, the, the carriage rides are really a way to get into the season, and it's such a joyful way for families to come together, especially after this year. You can get outside. Kids love seeing the horses. They have bearing, you know, carriages that they use. There's two at any given time. And these are just some pictures that people took of their experiences with the carriage ride. Here's some more. Social media is a great way to share what's going on, and so we love when people come down and post these. Um, the carriages are cleaned after every ride. People are wearing their masks, so we're following the social distancing practices. And I guess a question would be, why on earth am I so committed to the window displays? Um, there's a lot of reasons for that. Part of it is I kind of had an idyllic childhood, and not materialistically, although quite comfortable, but the memories and traditions of Candy Cane Lane. As children, you got to wear your pajamas and make that drive down two blocks of every house being lit up for Christmas. And you probably can't see the article as well, but here's an article in the paper about decorating for that. Um, what's funny too is Lynn and I sold a house on Candy Cane Lane, Eugene Field, about 12 years ago that actually came with the original Candy Cane, so that was quite fun. Also, the memories of ice skating on Corby Pond. That was something every winter we all did. Parents would come out. We'd have bonfires and roast marshmallows. They don't do that anymore, but 
those kind of memories of just Christmas and the holidays really made an impact on myself. Also, the wish book, you'd wait for that wish book and circle those two or three things you wanted Santa to bring you. And so I had very happy, happy, happy uh, childhood and memories. Another big factor, why I love downtown and, and Christmas, here is a photo of our father, Alfred Stover, who was an attorney at Light and Power for almost 30 years. I remember being a little girl, visiting, seeing my dad in his office, my dentist was downstairs, or downtown, and St. Joe Light and Power did a lot of the street decorating in the 60s for the holidays. And this is Light and Power today. Our dad has passed away, he passed away in 2011, but I know he would love that Lynn and I are the leasing agents on this project, and we've got the building about 50% full. But you can see they decorate and light up red and green for the holidays. And then here's some old photos um, at different times of Christmases downtown that again play into that nostalgic feel that we try to bring back with what we're doing today with holidays downtown. You can see the crowns on the left and I don't know what year the second picture is, but at different times they did a lot of the street decorations that you think of in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. And also those memories of Kansas City and the big displays that they did as well often motivated me later in life to try to recreate what I could. I also remember downtown just being full of people and traffic and cars and the windows displays and it was very exciting when you were four, five, and six. So, in this picture here you see in the foreground um, the German American Bank building with the carriage ride and in the background the United building. The United building is very special, Lynn and I, that was one of our first sales about 20 years ago. We got a lot of grief, people saying downtown's never coming back, why do you want to waste your time? 20 years later, we're really happy to say we're making great momentum in downtown revitalization. So here is the United Building this year, 6th Street side. It was a little different because in years past, I was able to have people volunteer and do some really great windows. I had interior designers. You know, people would take whole windows or just a tree. This year, I was kind of a one-woman show because of COVID and not being able to have people in the building. But I was determined to have every window filled. Mine are more for the children, but they are well lit up and they're all full. And this is the 6th Street looking from Felix um, at the United Building. And some of the windows we did, we did, uh, I did Once Upon a Time. There's a nursery rhyme themed tree and Cinderella tree. Kids love that. Here again is the United Building looking at the corner of Felix and 6th Street. This year, as in years past, we've had several places, the title companies, um, this is preferred title, sponsored these two rounded windows, which we call Dashing Through the Snow, and they made a contribution so we could buy the decorations and the trees needed to uh, fill this window. Candy Cane Lane, you can see back to childhood why um, every year I have a feature, we try to change it up on Candy Cane Lane. So many families take pictures um, with this in the background and it's always one of my favorite displays to uh, put together. Light and Power sponsored this one. It says, welcome to the North Pole. We have a giant Santa with his naughty and nice list and candy cane trees. Very, very pretty. Um, lot, a lot of people use that as a background as well. Here I am with Sasha again at night, turning the lights off. She loves Santa Claus. This window, these two rounded windows were sponsored by First American Title. It's called Elf Magic. Um, we tried to use a lot of light, you know, light up uh, props and animated displays and kids really love it. This one was sponsored by St. Joseph Title. It's based on the vintage Disney film Babes in Toyland and it has toy soldiers and um, teddy bear and uh, soldier guards. Very, very cute. This was one I loved putting together. This is our Berkshire Hathaway Stein and Summers real estate window. It's based on vintage Lake Contrary. I actually found and bought a carousel bench that was on the original carousel. 
So it's in the display, as well as a great collage of photos of the old Lake Contrary. I did the trees with um, cherry mash and popcorn bags and cotton candy machines. There's animated rides, um, which really make it fun as well. You can kind of see there's merry-go-rounds and bumper cars and a Ferris wheel. And you really have to see it at night to appreciate it. So. Another favorite, we always play on the Nutcracker um, ballet theme. Mark Hausman made me this series of beautiful four gingerbread houses that we use each year. And this one, this year we did the Land of Sweet scene. We also have um, different, like in the purple house, there are people waltzing. In the greenhouse, um, there is a Nutcracker factory and gingerbread. And then we also have in the pink house, they're actually ornaments I found on all the characters in the Nutcracker Ballet. So the Mouse King, the Chinese dancer, the Spanish dancer, the peppermint girls, they're all on the tree and they're great fun to look at. And here's a picture um, a family had me take of them in front of the gingerbread houses. It's great fun that we have the vintage polar bears from East Hills Malls from the 1960s. I don't know if people remember these, but um, we use these each year in different ways. On the left, that was last year's display. Um, this is this year's display. They are at the corner of Felix and Sixth Street. I have to point out, because people keep asking me if they are drunk, they are not. They're learning to ice skate, so no worries there, but they're great fun to use in our displays every year as well. And then I want to talk about some of the other businesses. I only do empty windows, but all the stores do their own. Here on the left, you see Nesting Goods Home Decor. On the right, this used to be the Woolworth Building. And we actually just sold this building in October. Very, very beautiful what they do all the time with their windows, but especially during the Christmas season. Inside, on the left, you'll see some of their Christmas inventory, and then a close-up of their display windows and the snowflakes on the outside of the building. And again, you'll see the snowflakes of nesting goods behind the carriage ride, and this is just a great shot of the horses that someone took and posted. Manic Snail Card and Gift, such a fun shop. They are in the Krug building on the 8th Street side, always beautiful windows. You can go in and find gift wrap cards, fun little gifts, stocking stuffers, one of my favorite stores. This is Black Cat Salvage, which used to be on the Belt Highway. We've been very successful bringing retail from the Belt downtown. And Black Cat Salvage is there on Francis Street between Geno's and the law firm on the corner. Always, they do great holiday stores. They have several um, vendors, so many holiday gifts you can buy there. I buy all my gifts local, 90% downtown. You can give gift certificates. Go in and check it out. There's something for everyone there. Uh, this one I love. Um, so we leased this to Eclipse Gourmet Popcorn and Ice Cream. They relocated off of the South Belt. They have um, popcorn samplers, great ice cream, cherry limeade. You can buy gift certificates or tins for Christmas. Dylan Cox has a candy bar. It's really a fun place. This used to be the Christian Reading Room before he leased it about a year and a half ago. And it's on Felix between 8th and 7th Street. This is our latest, newest retail store, the Unique Unicorn. It's in the Kirkpatrick building on Francis Street. You'll see it in the daytime on the right, and then lit up at night. They sell plants and unique plant-based gifts, and so we're really excited to welcome them to downtown. Love these windows. This is the Lucky Tiger Vintage Boutique. They are at 718 Francis Street. She has beautiful windows throughout the year, but at Christmas they're especially beautiful. I go in there and find vintage jewelry and vintage clothing. It's a great shop for all ages. My nieces love it. So check out the Lucky Tiger Vintage Boutique. Mod Podge Boutique is another great anchor. It's been down there a long, long time. Casey Waller said her windows are fabulous, and here they are decorated up this year. I love it too because at any given time you might find Casey's pup in the window and this is just a little dog walking by that saw the dog in the window and they're bonding over that. On the right is just another promotion for holidays downtown that we used. 
Now this is a building we have listed for sale. Mary McGarry totally redid this building. At one time it was, I wanna say the Monroe Cafe, like in the 1940s. Totally beautifully redone. There's 3,000 square foot retail space and actually we're very excited because we think we have a children's clothing boutique going in there in February. We did um, an animal, dogs and cats themed window to encourage adopting at the shelter during the holidays. So check that out. Here's a couple more close-ups of the windows. Very, very cute. All the ornaments on the trees are either different kinds of breeds of dogs or on the cat window, cats. There's another promotion we did. Last weekend we had Meet Santa and Mrs. Claus, which was great. We had the gazebo heated. You know, all the precautions of social distancing were taken, but kids could still get their picture taken with Santa and Mrs. Claus. On the right, we have the beautiful Corby building. Um, this is just one of their windows. They always do a fantastic job year round and especially at Christmas. Beautiful building there on Felix Street. Okay, I love this because Hunter Land used to be Esther's Fabrics and Lynn and I sold that, gosh, I don't even know, 15 years ago. An LA fabric designer had it and it was like stepping back in time in a time warp of Brady Bunch meets Groovy Partridge Family. Then I found out most of the costumes from the first Austin Powers movie, the fabric came from this building. Anyway, it's been totally rehabbed and is now Hunterland Antique Mall. They relocated from the South Belt, so we're very happy to have them there. On the right is 510 Edmond. It was the former food kitchen. We have that listed, and so windows were empty and just put Santa and some trees in there, and it lights that space up nicely. Here we have another great shot of the Welcome Arch to downtown at the corner of 8th Street and Felix. Um, again, people enjoying Felix Street Gourmet. They have a little cafe in there. You can order to go or eat there. All kinds of gift packages, um, gift baskets, wines, cheeses. Very, very great place to find gifts or gift certificates. This is just, I called up my friend who owns this building on the corner of 8th and Francis and said, can I please put something on your window? Even just some simple lighted Christmas trees, light that corner up, and Jason Myers was gracious enough to let me do that. So thank you, Jason. In the picture on the right, you'll see the green awnings. That is Gino's Pizza, and down from there is Black Cat Salvage. Okay, here's another new success story to downtown. They had been in the mall. This little pink facade there on Felix is Three Wishes Bakery. They're next to the Missouri Valley Bank Building where um, Paper Moon was shot all those years ago, but their storefront is Darling. Oh my gosh, they make the best chocolate covered strawberries, mini cupcakes. Um, I use them all the time and highly recommend them. This is, oh, too fast. This is Polished and Pampered Day Spa, 120 North 7th in the Kirkpatrick Building. Um, Love the photo of the little girl on the right. It just is magical. It was in the clip we did for TikTok. Great um, manicures, pedicures, stylists, massage, great salon, um, another service that's available downtown. And another great salon downtown is Bliss Salon, who always, every Christmas, does a fabulous job with their windows. Patrick Evanson took this shot. It was so pretty with the flag and the um, welcome to downtown, and then of course their window. And here it is lit up at night. Sasha and I making our nightly sojourn to check out all the windows one at a time. Ground Round, an anchor to our downtown at the corner of 6th and Edmond, Carriage Drive. This was two, two Saturday nights ago that I got this shot. And then the Maid Right building on the right, uh, Lynn and I have that listed. I'm trying to get a retro diner in there if anyone wants to start one or knows someone that does. But we've just filled it with trees just to, to brighten up that corner. And then also across from the old Maid Right, the Tiger's Den Book Bar. Uh, there's a really cool loft above that, a residential loft. But it is there at 519 Felix. And the picture on the right is just a picture someone inside took when they were there and it's kind of an artsy shot that I thought was really cool. This is the Felix Street Pub. Um, we lost Jim Root this year and his wife. Very sadly, his son Joel lit the pub up, um, kind of in his honor. And 
hopes to reopen it this winter or early spring, so we're very thankful for that and we miss Jim and Stacy very, very much. The beautiful Missouri Theater, um, last week they had It's a Wonderful Life and downtown was packed. It was Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, so it was great to see some activity going on there. On the left, you see the carriages passing there, and on the right, that's just a picture I took Sunday evening um, for that final matinee performance. Beautiful theater. One fun thing, too, um, I've been involved in is the Allied Arts Sculpture Walk. That's another thing when you're down checking out the shops and the windows and the decorations, you can take the sculpture walk. On the left, you have the professor. I've been trying to add some bling with ribbons and hats to make it festive for the holidays. On the right, um, that's in front of Mod Podge there on Francis. This little guy, Mellow Fellow, he is by Cafe Pony Espresso on 8th Street. And then this is a shot someone took um, just looking at the professor, the owl, before he got his uh, ribbon for Christmas. I love the St. Joseph Symphony window, very, very pretty. They are on 8th Street, and we're looking, that first shot, we're looking north on 8th Street, and this is just a close-up of their window, very pretty at night. And then there's another shot, just looking north on 8th Street. That's the new parking garage with mosaic, and across the street at the News Press on 8th Street and Edmund. So this is the offices of the Downtown Association. Christy George, she's such a great addition to downtown and promoting and coordinating activities. And she and her mom, Marcy, did these windows and they, they look so pretty and have that vintage, kind of the blow mold of uh, Christmas's past. So the first picture is, that used to be Weagle's Carpet Company and it was in a total state of, of decline. Rick Gilmore bought it totally renovated it about five years ago. On the main floor is the Metropolitan event space, and then on the second, third, and fourth floor are 12 very cool market rate lofts that rent for $9.95 to $17.50. They're completely full. You see their parking lot, and there's a sun deck where the wreaths are, and then ground round is on the other side. I love this. This is our beautiful Buchanan County Courthouse. I love that they did this huge tree and all the decorations. The first shot, you see Boudreaux's on the left and the courthouse on the right. And then here's another couple of shots um, of both buildings. And so Boudreaux's also has, the Britton Richardson building has uh, market rate lofts that are completely full. So we are seeing people living downtown, working downtown, playing downtown by shopping and eating. And that's what you need for a healthy downtown. This is our beautiful Convention and Visitor Bureau that welcomes people into the downtown. This photo by Patrick Evanson just captures it beautifully, and they are an integral part of promoting not just downtown, but all of St. Joseph. Here's another marketing campaign. So we always have Santa roaming about, or meet Santa and Mrs. Claus. Here's Santa last year by the big Christmas tree. It's very important we market this because not only do we want people to see the lights and the displays, but we want people to come down and check out the shops and support local business. And here's just some shots of people enjoying, um, I believe this was last Saturday night. It was cooler last Saturday night, but people bundled up and it didn't stop them from having a great time. Furry friends welcome. Here's another great family photo that Hillary Newey posted. And again, to bring some joy to people after this year, that's what we're hoping for. Um, to bring a smile, just to get outside. You can drive by these, you don't even have to get out if you don't want to. You can take the carriage ride, you can walk and stroll, but you know, it's just a good way to end the year on a positive note and let people know that downtown's thriving and going strong. There's a few more selfies that people took. So I, I really appreciate the time to share with you kind of traditions of past and future. Um, hopefully next year I can have volunteers, so I always welcome anybody that wants to participate. It's great fun, and please, please, if you have time, go down and check out all the great things happening downtown, and wishing everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you.
was amazing. Thank you for all that you do. If you have not had a chance to drive through downtown for the holidays, I encourage you to do so. It's so magical and so lovely, and it will take you back in time, and you'll enjoy every minute of it. You'll want to do it over and over again. Thanks for joining us, Laura. Um, now it's my time to introduce Kelly with, with Frudenthal, Kelly Jarrett. With the holidays just around the corner, we can't help but think about all the tasty treats that have already fallen into our mouths. Um, we've already indulged in all those. We have a lot of delicious meals that are going to be prepared. Um, it's getting cold, so we want to build up our strength and, and stay strong through the winter. And Kelly with Frudenthal is here to lead us through some of those simple exercises that will make us stronger and maybe even help our weight, waistline. Kelly. Um, I want to say Merry Christmas to you all, and I'm excited to be here today. I want to remind everybody first, so I don't forget, that I do have a wonderful exercise class at the Joyce Ray Patterson Building every Monday at 1 o'clock. Um, we have a great time there. Also, we meet at the mall for the Fit Club um, every Wednesday at 9 o'clock. And it's a great time there. We just got done with that today, and we had so much fun. We laughed and laughed and just had a good time. Um, so you're all invited to always c to come and be a part of all that. Uh, but I wanted to say, today um, I kind of thought this through because it's the holidays, and we're going to be uh, lifting heavy presents, and we're going to be going out sled riding with our grandkids, and we're going to make snow angels and fall down a few times and we might twerk our back or make it feel a little bit sore and so I want to talk to you today about keeping a, a healthy back um, and if you have some general pain I can't this doesn't really include like a specific diagnosis but if you just have a little backache these are some little exercises that might help you so I'm going to start out in the chair the first one is a good morning stretch. I sit way out on the edge of my seat without falling off, um, if you can. And then we're going to reach down and touch the floor. Go straight up over your head. I'm arching my back now, and I'm going around. It feels so good. I call this a back refresh. We're going down and up and around. I'm going to do three of these, and down, and up, arch, and around. Doesn't that feel good? Yeah, good job. Okay, <laughs> next exercise. Okay, so sometimes our hamstrings get a little tight, and most of us have tight hamstrings. Um, and when they're tight, they are tugging on your low back all the time because of where, they're adjust, where they uh, attach. So what I'm going to show you real quick is a seated hamstring stretch. So I want you to sit on the edge of your seat, straight leg out in front, and your toe brought up towards your nose. And then we're going to just lean forward, keeping that leg straight, and you'll feel a nice little ouchie behind your knee, which should be just a good stretch. So I'm going to count to five. One, two, three, four, and five. Great. We're going to switch again. And do the other one. Toe up, straight leg. Make sure what, what ha happens a lot of times is when you're trying to lean forward, your knee will go boop. It's because you're tight. So we need to try to keep it straight. Head down to it if you can. And there you go. One, two, three, four, and five. Let's do one more on each side real quick. Toe up, because this one's easy, kind of. Toe up, lean forward, straight leg. One, two, three, four, five. Good. I like to show you something in a chair and something in a different position so that anywhere you are you can kind of mess, help your back a little bit if you've got a little soreness. One, two, three, four, and five. Great. Okay, the next ones I'm going to do are all going to be on this mat. Now don't freak out. Don't freak out because you can do this in your bed. And so many times people go, oh, I can't do that because it's on the floor. But you can do it in your bed because you can get in your bed and do these easily and get back up easily. So I'm going to lay here on this mat. And I was just going to say 
you know, I know she was talking about us being skinnier. Uh, these exercises really aren't necessarily for getting skinnier, but this one works really good because guess what? My stomach looks a lot flatter <laughs> right here. <laughs> so I'm going to go, oh yeah, looking good, looking good. All right. These exercises will help you retain a healthy back. If you're having backache, I'm, I, it might make you feel better. Um, if you're concerned about anything, if whether or not you should do these exercises, be sure you ask your doctor, okay? So we're gonna go from side to side. This is called a lower trunk rotation. This is stretching my outside. And I'm gonna do about five of these just to show you, okay? Three, no, that's two. See, I always count wrong, two. And four. Good, let's just do one more for our time's sake, because I have several exercises I'm gonna show you. And the reason I wanna show you so many is because some of them you might not like. So you might wanna switch to the other one. Okay, the next one, sitting here, laying in your bed, flat back, okay? Knees up, and I'm gonna stretch like this. Pull my knee up toward my chest, and I'm gonna hold. Knee up toward my chest, and I'm gonna hold. Now many times when I get a patient in this position and I tell them about this, they grab their knee right here, which if you have, it can really stir up some knee issues, so I don't really want you to squish that. It's a lot of pressure on the knee. So I go just behind the knee. It's a much better situation. Good one. Oh, that feels so good. Okay, and then the next one is one of my very, very favorites because it really relieves back ache pretty quickly for me. So um, this one's called the pelvic tilt. It is kind of a weird little move, and so it's going to be hard for me to explain it to you, but I want you to watch me because it's a subtle move, but I want to flatten my back toward the bed and hold that position. So your back has a nice little curve in it, and I'm trying to flatten that out toward my mat and back down. Sometimes if my patient just can't understand the, my explanation, because I'm not a real great communicator, believe it or not, um, I'll say, how about I put my hand underneath your back and you flatten it onto your hand. Another way is I'll say, start to pick your bottom up off the bed and it automatically gets that position and then I say stop right there. So then we hold, hold, hold. It's a really nice little move that will make your back feel a little better. Okay, the next one kind of goes along with the pelvic tilt. This one is a bridging exercise and I love this one. Now this particular exercise is almost always on my list for patients uh, because it's a very great functional exercise. If you can get your butt up off the bed, you can scooch. You can get up out of a chair better. All these things will, so this will be helpful. So I just want you to look at this. We're gonna make a bridge, butt up off the, off the bed. Try to flatten right here. And you can see why that would be a really good exercise. So because of this exercise, because of this good exercise, you can get yourself scooted around in the bed and everything, and you can sit, get up off a seat. It's a really great one. So please, every day, do 10 to 15 of those before you get out of bed and when you go to bed, okay? So promise me you'll do that. Okay, so the last one I'm gonna show you is, hope I don't get vertigo, woo. Anyway, the last one I'm gonna show you is called the cat stretch. <clears throat> you get on all fours, Again, that's why I'm showing you so many different ones because some of you might not feel comfortable in some of these positions. But this is a, this is a cat stretch. We round our back. And then I like to drop mine into like that and my head up. And then I round it. And I drop it. And I round it and I drop it. 
really great exercise. So that's pretty much my exercise uh, uh, show for you. If it's a show, I don't know what this is. But anyway, I got those for you. And I want to say Merry Christmas because uh, this has been a rough year for most of us. Um, but I want to tell you Merry Christmas. And we have some light at the end of the tunnel. We will get through this. And I want to say Happy New Year. May 2021 ring beautiful for all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. an inspiration. And I can eat more sugar plums this year because of her. Also wanted to um, remind you that Kelly is at the Joyce Ray Patterson Center every Monday at 1 o'clock. And then she meets up with a group at the food court at the mall every Wednesday at 1 o'clock. So it's a lot of fun. She makes it a good time, and it's just a, a nice way to get out amongst a few friends. Now I have a good joke for you. What goes O O O? Santa walking backwards. <laughs> o O O O no Oh no 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 he is here. <laughs> It's time to bring on Bobby with some announcements. Here he is. That's right, Jane. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas to you guys. It took me a little bit to get off the floor. I was trying to work out there with Kelly. I can't do that anymore, Kelly, but uh, <laughs> I'm getting a lot better, and I sure appreciate you coming out. I do do some of her exercises in I case too. you guys didn't know, so it really does work. So Jane's always giving me cheesy jokes. I'll start off with it. What does Santa's elves learn in school? The elf a bed. See, I don't get it. <laughs> Jason, did you pick up on that one? I got, got you got it. Yeah. All right, well, maybe you can explain that to me. You know, I always try to get in the Christmas spirit this time of year, and I told the wife, I said, hey, let's go out to that mall. She goes, oh, no, I ain't going to that mall. You know, she was the jewelry manager at J.C. Penney's for years out there, and she goes, that Santa Claus is awful. I am not going to the mall. I said, how can Santa Claus be awful? She says, I was out there all the time. He always calls me names. I don't go there anymore. I said, honey, how can he be calling you names? She says, every time I went in the mall and I waved at him, he always hollered, ho, ho, ho. So I just don't go to the mall anymore. <laughs> I already told her that joke before I said it today. So she, she approved. Hey, who had a birthday in uh, December? Happy birthday to you. Stand up and sing. We're working on events for uh, 2021, but between the weather and this time of year and COVID, these events are nothing that we can plan too far in advance, guys. If we can uh, have your contact information, and uh, it's very important because this is our first chance to join the Silver and Gold Club and become a member. So if you get an opportunity, go to the resource page at www.meyerhoffer.com and sign up or call Jane. You all know her number, 816-271-0338. That's 816-HOT-COCO. Jane, 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 she changes her phone number every month. That is so bizarre, don't you think so, Jason? Hey, please give us the feedback on Facebook Live event. If this something that you enjoy, we'd like to continue it, even though it's not working very good today. Hey, we're working on it, all right? We are brainstorming new ideas on how to keep our members engaged. If you have any ideas, please share them with us. We plan to keep you busy, but safe, until we meet again as a group. Hey, Jason. Hey, Bobby. What's the absolute best Christmas present? Um, you, you're an instrumental guy. You ought to know. It's simple. A piece on earth. No, the present. What's, okay. what's, the, what's the, yeah, what's the absolute best Christmas present? A new guitar. Well, you're real close. It's a broken <laughs> drum. <laughs> yeah, you can't beat it. <laughs> You like that one? Uh, okay. I'm going to use that. Hey, these are all Jane's jokes, man. You know, in case you guys didn't know, this is our good friend here, Jason Riley. And he's a versatile guitarist. Jason is a professional experience, includes recording, 
composing, teaching, and performing in multiple styles. His education in classical guitar and commercial music included extended study in American styles, jazz, and in Improvisation. Hey, that's a big word for Jane to write. Look at that. <laughs> you have to take one that's of them out because right. he that, that is awesome. <laughs> hey, when Jason was 16 years old, he began giving guitar lessons out of his parents' house. Now he's got his own place to teach. With the help of several other instructors, it says here Riley, but your actual your name's Jason, right? Yes. Yes. Jason <laughs> has opened the St. Joe Arts Academy aimed at teaching guitar to people of all ages. So without any further ado, Mr. Jason Riley. Thank you. Take it away, brother. sleeves it's uh, traditionally a classical guitar piece um, and uh, gets turned every Christmas into something called what child is this so I uh, really enjoy playing that one thanks for having me out today you guys this is really fun and great to hear Laura talk about downtown I love downtown and so so much to really be proud of and it is beautiful this time of year but a lot of really fun facts so, um, we are making some music for Christmas time today this next piece is uh, it's a Ukrainian bell carol. We just call it the Carol of the Bells. And it's definitely one of my favorites. It goes like this. <laughs>
Carol of the Bells. Thank you. <laughs> and um, we, um, I am a guitar teacher. Um, I teach at Missouri Western at Benedictine College. I have a lot of, um, love my days uh, teaching their guitar students. And we do have, I'm the director of the uh, St. Joseph Arts Academy. And as much as I'd love to be downtown, we are at North 36 Street, um, close to Beck, Beck and 36th Street in the Beck Road Center. And we're teaching violin and voice and guitar and uh, so many, um, most of the significant instruments or main instruments. And we have a great staff of teachers there working with us. Normally our kids are out playing every month. They're doing something, lots of performance opportunities for them. But um, this year has been a little different. Um, we haven't been able to get out and do quite as many things. Um, but thanks to our friends here at the Silver and Gold, um, we have, uh, we, we came and performed, brought a very small group and performed in, in August right here, and uh, that meant so much to our kids and our families who were able to watch uh, virtually. So it's great to be back here today, and um, hope you'll, um, you'll check us out online. It's uh, www.stjosephartsacademy.com. My very favorite Christmas piece is Silent Night, and uh, got a kind of a special little arrangement. I hope you really like it. Thanks, Jane, Bobby, Josh, everybody. Appreciate you guys, and have a Merry Christmas, everybody. Bobby silent. The only silent thing night. that would have made that better, brother, if I would have chimed in and okay. sang with you. Next, you know? next time we'll do All that. right, we'll work on that That's next time. That's right. That was awesome, Jason. It was. Thank you. Um, thank you to Laura Wyatt for the holiday trip down memory lane. We're thrilled at all you have done with the businesses and buildings in downtown St. Joe. We all have so many fond memories of that part of town. I know you probably don't, but I do. <laughs> It's fun to see it come to life, especially during the holidays. We were so glad that Kelly Jarrett could join us again for her energy, enthusiasm, really making exercising fun. 
And Jason, once again, here's your turn. Thank you, brother. Thank you so Merry Christmas to you. you He's always the best. This time he didn't bring his friends. Next time, we'll just bring whoever you want. Yeah. And believe it or not, he sounds just as good by himself, doesn't he? Oh, thank you. He, he really is does. awesome. <laughs> Um, today's Facebook Live, we had some glitches, but we're recording and going to make sure you all get a chance to see it. Um, it could not have happened without the help of the creative team at Frudenthal Home Based Health Care. Thanks, Josh. Thank Josh. you. Josh. Thank you for making today's live stream get all screwed up. <laughs> no, we don't know what happened today. Um, Things were just not working for us, but we are going to send out an amazing video for you guys to watch when this is all said and done. And we do want to thank to everybody that was able to join us for today's luncheon. I hope your lunch was awesome. <laughs> we know how much you miss the silver and gold, especially me, but Jane's here too. So, you know, you got to, got to miss Jane. <laughs> and we got a new partner today. You don't forget about Jason. So you'll That's miss right. Jason too. <laughs> And we're going to work hard to keep engaging and have you entertained until we can get together as a group again. And it is going to happen. Okay? So our silver and gold motto, Jane. Make new, new friends, friends and, and keep, keep the old. One, one is silver, silver and the and other is gold. gold. Thank you for being with us today. Take care. Have a, have very, a merry, Christmas very, very merry Christmas and a happy new year. We'll be looking forward to seeing you soon. How'd you do?